Guys, I'm going to give you one chance, okay? If you call me Fat Trevor Lawrence, I'm going to put a hat on, okay? Can I trust you? All right, then. So we're going to talk about... Okay, I, I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to freaking happen. Oh. You made me do it. Holy cow, I take a, a, a more than a month away from uploading a video. Now you're getting two in less than 12 hours. It's crazy how that happens. But what up, everyone? It's Matt Mamba. I just got done watching the Ohio State Clemson Fiesta Bowl game. And let me just say, there were two calls I was very unsatisfied with. I'm not too sure why they were called. Well, I know why the first one was called. But the second one, I have no idea. So let's just break them down and let me explain my reasoning. Okay, can we do that? But before I get into my reasoning, Clemson fans, listen very closely because I know a lot of you idiots... I'm not going to, oh God, this is already a bad start. Clemson fans, you're very intelligent people. I'm sorry about that. I am not saying you wouldn't have won the game. I'm not saying the refs stole this game from Ohio State. I have no idea what would have happened in the alternate reality had the refs not messed up these two calls, all right? I'm not saying you would have not won. I'm just saying the game would have looked a whole lot different if the right calls were being called, okay? That's all I'm saying. And Ohio State fans, I swear to God, don't go all up in my comments like, yeah, we, we, we should have won this game, all right? You, you guys, early in this game, it was 16-0. This, this game should have been a freaking blowout, but you guys had to settle for field goal, field goal, field goal. This should have been a blowout, all right? But these two calls could have given Ohio State the win, could have not. I'm not going to say. The first one, of course, being the hit on Trevor Lawrence that got Sean Wade kicked out of the game for targeting. Kicked out of the game for targeting, all right? So let's just take a look at this play together, all right? All right, so here he comes. Boom. Uh, you kind of saw Trevor Lawrence duck there for a second. Um, right here. Boom. Trevor Lawrence is ducking by the time Sean Wade was already coming. So what the frick is Sean Wade supposed to be psychic in his knowing what Trevor Lawrence is going to do with his body in order to not get a targeting freaking penalty called on him for him to get tossed out of the biggest game of the season? I mean, it's ridiculous. And gee, I wonder how freaking little six foot one Sean Wade was able to get to the helmet neck area of a six foot six Trevor Lawrence. Maybe it's because he ducked right before the contact was made. How the frick was he supposed to know he was going to do that? Why don't we read the uh, targeting penalty rules for the NCAA to try and get a good idea and see if he actually did commit the penalty. Targeting does not solely occur when players initiate helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. It is defined as occurring when a player takes aim at an opponent for purposes of attacking with forcible contact that goes beyond making a legal tackle or a legal block or playing the ball. Instances include, but are not limited to, launch, a player leaving his feet to attack an opponent by an upward forward thrust of the body to make forcible contact in the head or neck area. Did not leave his feet at all, both of his feet. No, that's not a thing. He did not launch himself. A crouch followed by an upward and forward thrust to attack with forcible contact in the head or neck area, even though one or both feet are still on the ground. He didn't crouch. Freaking Trevor Lawrence crouched. He just was going in to wrap him up, and Trevor Lawrence freaking bent down and freaking i'm like he's six foot six sean wade is six one how the heck is he gonna get to the helmet neck area if he didn't launch his body both feet are still on the ground how in the world do you think he's getting to the helmet neck area leading with the helmet shoulder forearm fist hand or elbow to attack with forcible contact at the head or neck area again did he lead with his helmet you could argue he did lead with his helmet but it was not oh frick it was not in the head or neck area until Trevor Lawrence last second decided to crouch down like the genius he is that made it worse for himself. And then finally, lowering the head before attack attacking by initiating forcible contact with the crown of his helmet. He did not freaking use the crown of his helmet. He was going in like this. His face mask was forward. He was not full on down. All right. So this should not have been targeting. He should have not been tossed from the game. That was, that was a huge momentum swing. And that penalty ended up costing them. Ended up giving him an automatic first down, and they ended up going in for a touchdown. So that was a huge play right there, and we're not even getting into the worst call of this game, folks. Now we get to watch this play. This is the only angle you need to see. Not because it's the only angle that shows my opinion, but it's because it shows everything that shows this was a catch, and that it was a fumble, and there was a clear recovery for a touchdown that would have been seven points for Ohio State. All right, so let's just take a look and watch this bad boy together. All right, as you can see, there's one step, two step, three steps. That ball is secure. Four steps. He brings the ball in. That's a catch, and then is stripped. That is four steps, have the ball secure up here, brings the ball securely down here, then it is stripped. What part of that is, a, is an incomplete pass? 
everything that happens there makes it a freaking catch. And then there was this one announcer on ESPN that was driving me crazy. He's like, yeah, but I want to see it at full speed. That did not look full speed. That that was not a complete pass. Why do you need to see it full speed? You want to see him take four steps and then bring the ball down at full speed? It doesn't matter. He's doing everything that constitutes a catch. What difference does it make if it happens full speed or not full speed? And even when you look at it full speed, it's still a freaking catch. He had it one, two, three, four. What, what more do you freaking want? I don't understand. And the fact is, on the field, it was called... A freaking fumble, recovery, touchdown, Ohio State. And after looking at that, this was one of the angles they had to look at, and they saw, and they saw that this, yeah, this this was an incomplete pass. I cannot even begin to wrap my head around how that makes sense. Of course, these are SEC officials, so that's how you know they're freaking trash. And oh, it just, it drives me crazy. I don't know. I can't even begin to get into the mindset of how you can overturn that. It, it makes it it's freaking it's quizzical it, at this point holy cow this is what constitutes a catch according to the ncaa to catch a ball means that a player secures control of a live ball in flight before the ball touches the ground and touches the ground and bounds with any part of his body and then main tra maintains control of the ball long enough to enable him to perform an act common to the game long enough to pitch or hand the ball had plenty of time for that advance it avoid or ward off an opponent he was doing all of that while he was bringing the ball in and he brought the ball in i i'm not understanding how this is not a catch this is this is something i think not even the nfl could have messed up but somehow this is messed up in one of the biggest college football games of the entire year um now i root for ohio state when i watch college football but let me just start off by saying i'm not a huge ohio state or i'm not a huge college football fan so, Ohio State winning or losing this game, I could care less. I'll get plenty of sleep either way. I'm more worried about my freaking Packers. And so, this game, I could care less. I really could. I don't care. Congratulations to Clemson's great game. I hope you, I, I'm so happy for you that you put up a hard fought battle for you to get bopped by LSU in the national championship game. Good for you. All right. But these two calls were just so awful. Like, and I even remember watching the catch that turned into a fumble touchdown. I remember watching it full speed. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if this is going to uphold. The only question I had was, did he have control of the ball? Because plenty of time passed from him making or catching the football, having the steps, bringing the ball in, and then it fumbling. My only question was, was that ball secure? And it was absolutely secured. And the Ohio State player made the play of stripping it because he had full control of that football before he stripped it. So I don't know what the frick is going on. This is, I'm rambling. But here's the part of the video where I pass it off to you geniuses. What did you think? I haven't seen a single person on Twitter say that that fumble recovery overturn was a good call. So I'll leave it to the geniuses over in the YouTube comments to prove me wrong and see some idiot try and defend the referees for doing that. Um, Colin Coward, of all people, said, oh, yeah, if you look at it full speed, I, I just don't see that as a complete catch. Shut the heck up, Colin Coward. You don't even, you don't, oh, he ticks me off. But anyways, this is a video. Not sure if it's going to make sense. I haven't edited it yet that because I'm still recording it. But anyways, I'm Matt Mom, but I don't know how to close videos. Frick. I got I to gotta think of another outro. I don't know what to tell you guys. I don't have a closing to this video. What's that? What's that, Mr. Belly Button? You have something you want to share? I guess uh, my, my belly button wants to share with something, you guys. All right, what is it? Eh. Oh, what's that? We got we got screws. Oh, I, I, I think he's trying to say the refs really s screwed this game up. All right, have a, have a good one, guys. All right, here. Call me, call, I deserve to be called Fat Trevor Lawrence. Now, that was embarrassing. The Stephen A. Smith Show on 710 ESPN LA comes on 9 to 11 p.m. tonight. We will not discuss Kobe Bryant, guys. That's a bummer, because I'm a big Kobe Bryant fan. I was hoping that on April 15th, 2011, they'd be talking about Kobe Bryant, but they're not. But, but, let's read the rest of the tweet. We will, however, discuss the... What?!